everybody, it's me, Laura, and today we're going to be doing my metallic Bargello on polymer clay scrap mud. Yes, mud. I mean, it's scrap clay, but it's mud also. <laughs> You know, I was like, what's the difference, right? <laughs> Anyways, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start prepping up some of this mud clay. I just, it's just dark brown. I, you know, I can't stand brown. I'm sorry. That's just my thing. But I'm taking this mud clay, this brown clay of whatever it was. I'm just cutting this thing up into pieces. I want to say I rolled this out on my Atlas pasta machine on a number five setting on my Atlas pasta machine. So this stuff is a little bit thin, but that's okay. We don't want it terribly thick. Um, four or five is the best. I, you know, that's the nice range for me when it comes to doing this. Anyways, I want to say this particular uh, piece of scrap clay is two to three inches in diameter all the way around. And I'm going to take a little bit of my black um, matte like acrylic paint and I'm going to go ahead and paint the surface of this scrap clay. And yes, this clay is unbaked, so it has not been baked yet. And I'm using my paintbrush here. But, you know, after a little bit, I thought, no, to heck with that. I'm just going to use my finger, too. Um, I found I'd much rather prefer using my finger than my paintbrush here when it came to painting up this clay. Now, I'm doing the black here with the paintbrush, but I had to do about six or seven sheets of this stuff. And the more sheets I did, it was like, okay, let's just bring in the finger. <laughs> the nice thing about using my finger was when I, when I rolled it over the surface of this clay, it seemed to thin out uh, better. And it, it almost seems like I was able to push the clay, or I should say the paint further too. So it wasn't really... How do I say this? Um, uh, built up on the surface of this unbaked clay. And to me, that was very important. So right here, one of these pieces has been totally you know, dried up. I'm bringing in my metallic amethyst. And this was the uh, deco art type. And I'm just kind of going over that surface yet again. And you're not going to get a, you know, just a great covering right at first. You're going to have to let this dry. And then you're going to have to come back in with the second coat to make sure you get a nice coating on this. So right here, I'm bringing in another sheet of that um, clay that I went ahead and I painted it over with my black matte acrylic. And I'm going to have a couple more sheets in here that I'm going to bring in. Right here, I'm bringing in the ice blue, and then I'm going to bring in my copper, and then my peacock pearl, and then my festive green. And then we're going to do like all different sheets with each of these colors. Okay, so now that we've gotten these sheets all covered and they're nice and dry and you can tell I've really gone over them pretty well, we're going to start cutting strips from each of these sheets. So now you're going to, you're going to find that when you go to cut down on this, it is acrylic paint and it has dried, right? When you go to cut down, it's going to give you a little bit of resistance because you're cut, cutting through the paint here, okay? But once you cut through the paint, you're going to have some really nice strips to work with. Now you may have noticed here too, I have not measured these out. I just went ahead and started cutting. Well, when I went back to go check on how like wide these were, they were a little bit larger than an eighth of an inch. And I just got into a rhythm of where I'm just cutting all very similar in size. If you're pretty sure about your cutting, go ahead and cut each of these, you know, these strips and just kind of, you know, go, <laughs> go with the rhythm of it, if you will. <laughs> In my mind, it was, you know, I've just gotten so used to cutting that I just can get fairly close. I don't have to really check when I'm measuring. If you really need to check your measurement or if you're new to polymer clay and you really want to make sure you get this precise, you can do these at a, you know, about an eighth of an inch or a little bit larger than that when you go to cut your strips. Now you need to know here that when I cut these strips, this is kind of my standard 
uh, size in creating my Bargello. This is the standard size of width when I cut my strips. I don't usually go bigger than this because to me it doesn't really seem necessary, but I'm going to show a little bit more of that when it comes to size later on. So another little recommendation here on cutting these strips, um, the paint is dried, right? The paint is dried and I painted this, you know, pretty quickly and then I cut it after it dried pretty quickly. So I didn't wait and just come back later. I thought I needed to get it on it, you know, pretty much right away because I, I didn't really want to just let this go. I thought I need to really get to it. And I think it does make a difference because, you know, when you let that clay kind of sit, of course, it, you know, it doesn't get worked with if you leave it overnight. And so when you do that, it might not, you know, react as well. Um, that green, for instance, that you just saw, I had just painted that <laughs> and I cut it while it was still wet. So if you feel like you're confident enough to go ahead and do so, you can do that too. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna start putting down our strips with different colors sitting next to each other. So I have like my amethyst right there, and then I brought in a strip of that ice blue, and then I'm bringing in some of that peacock pearl strip. I'm just placing these pieces next to each other. I do not have another piece of scrap clay underneath it. I just used really just the clay that was underneath it, just kind of butting it up together. That seemed to adhere it enough to each other to make it work. And the more you start to cut this, the more it's gonna naturally kind of cling to itself too. However, that said, um, I do go back in eventually and I thought, no, let's go ahead and place these strips on another piece of scrap clay because it is easier. I will have to say, if I have to move this up off my plate, it's much easier to move it if it's on just a solid piece of another piece of clay. So. Right here though, I'm just bringing in all these different little um, you know, strips. You know, I have my festive green, I have that copper in there, and I'm just gonna go ahead and once I have this all together, I'll add in a few more if you will. <laughs> it gets pretty big. But once I get enough of these strips put together, I'm gonna come in with my tissue blade here and I'm gonna cut off the ends on the one side here, giving myself a nice, solid just you know even piece right there and then I'm going to do the same on the other side as well. All right so this piece now is all put together the uh, shorter side is about one and a half inches wide and then the longer side is close to three inches. So right here, I'm taking my blade and I'm cutting a section where I'm getting a bunch of little squares. And this is my first piece, right? I like to use my blade, if at all possible, to keep it straight right on there. I'm gonna cut another piece very similar to that. And then we're just going to move it up one. So you're gonna see the nice thing about having all these strips so defined is that you're gonna be easily able to put one square just above the other and so on, okay? Then once, and I do this like I'll go three up, so I'll go up three and then I'll come down and I didn't really do it here so much, but usually I do three and then come down. But right here, I decide to go up one more and you'll notice it really creates a nice dynamic effect. And these colors are fascinating too. Now, you'll also notice there, I lost a little piece. Once in a while that happens, so just place it back into the row it came from. Anyway, I'm coming back down in here and I'm coming the other direction, and this is what your Bargello is going to look like in the end. Okay, so I'm bringing in another piece of scrap clay here, and this thing was rolled out on a number six setting. And, you know, it can be thin like that. Your, your scrap clay can be thin in this case, and that's okay because really all it is is just a nice 
something for these strips to just adhere to. That way then it's all in one piece and it'll come up off your tile smoothly. Anyways, I've got these strips. I'm gonna be placing them all down next to each other and then we'll start cutting. All right, so unlike the last piece, which was about, I wanna say it was three inches long, pretty long, right? This one's not nearly as long. I have like 10 strips here all together and I'm cutting off the ends and we're just gonna start creating our Bargello. I'm lifting this up off my surface and once I have it, like I said, I'll start getting this where I start cutting into slices or sections. We'll start our Bargello and as I go along here, this is going to be a little bit different from the last piece where it's like I went up and then I came down and that was pretty much it. We're going to do it where we go up and then we go down. We're going to be creating this pattern over and over again. And I like to go three up and then two back down and then another two up and so on. This is generally my favorite pattern. I don't like to go really like five up or seven up and then come down. That's a lot, you know? <laughs> And you really have to, I don't know, to me it just seems like the pattern is more uh, compact in this version. So once I have this right here, I've been looking at this and I thought, okay, let's go ahead and I want to have it flush or cut on one side. So I'm trying to figure out exactly where I want to cut it and I thought, no, let's come down just a little bit more. And I've got that dark blue, just that one notch in there. I'm cutting that down and I'm lifting it up and then I'm bringing it over to the other side and we'll just place it in so that it fits right into the notches. This gives you if I really wanted to, I could keep making more and more Bargello, create the same feature, and it will then give you more and more of kind of a real border, if you will. I mean, it will be straight on both sides. You don't have that jaggedy edge. And if I was to keep building out as I did and then do this, yeah, you'd have a really nice little border to work with and you could place it into any project then. Here again, I have another piece of 10 strips together, okay? And I'm gonna start creating that Bargello once more. And this time, we're gonna change it up where we're not gonna be just placing it on the other side where it's gonna to fit together. It's gonna to give you a nice, you know, almost rectangle or square shape all the way around. Instead, we're gonna go ahead and cut it off. And when we cut it off, we're gonna go ahead and flip this around. So in other words, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take the piece I've cut off, right? And that, like I said, I've flipped it around so it's on the same, you can see it's just slightly smaller than the other piece, but I thought, no, 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 we're not gonna leave it off as two pieces. Instead, we're gonna take that piece and we're gonna overlap the other one with it and I really liked this effect. You got a little bit more of a three-dimensional kind of look with it just because you overlapped it. And because it has the flat edge on the one side, you could still use this as a border too. Anyways, we're gonna come into doing now my favorite piece, and this is where I have five strips and not 10. It really is my favorite. I, you know, the other one was my was a favorite in the regard that I'd go up two and then I come down two and so on and so forth. I go back and forth, so you get that nice jagged kind of look. This is my ultimate favorite because I have five sections. Okay, so I have five strips and I still do that jagged up and down look all the way throughout but this is more manageable to me. This is actually something where I can use the entire pattern into any kind of piece I'm working with. Um, I keep thinking jewelry here a lot. And that's the, that's the thing. I mean, who wouldn't want to give up this wonderful metallic look <laughs> that I'm getting with the acrylic paints on the paint and the Bargello effect? I, I, it's my favorite. It really is. So I wanted to kind of show you what this would look like if you went ahead and did this look as well. Okay, so I wanted to go tinier than what I had just shown you. And I'm just gonna totally ruin it for you guys. <laughs> right now, right here, I'm gonna ruin it and I'm gonna say this is my favorite, favorite, favorite. <laughs> I like getting teeny tiny, I can't help it. And I'm only using one piece of that black clay, or I should say the scrap clay, the mud clay that I've painted over with the black. 
um, I'm only using one piece this time. And that is because we're gonna put like, I think I've got like four colors I'm gonna put on here. So I wanna say the first color was a purple flash, and then it was a blue violet flash, and then I had my uh, green flash and my pink flash, and I ran out of room, <laughs> so I had to get a second piece of clay, and I decided to use my blue flash. So yeah, so green, pink, blue violet, purple, and blue. <laughs> Anyways, I'm making, I want to say this thing was probably about a half of an inch wide on each of these colors. So the entire length of this clay was probably about two inches, you know, or somewhere right in there. It might have been a little bit wider because I did have to cut it down just slightly. Anyways, once I get this paint dried up on this, you know, piece of clay, I'm going to start cutting tinier sections on each color. Now, when I get to the raggedy edge, I just kind of cut that piece off, and then I just keep cutting when it comes to the next color that's coming up. Now, you might have noticed there that I brought my ruler in and you saw that it was an eighth of an inch wide. So this is very thin. And the reason for that is because this is getting tiny now. This is like, this is my tiny. And I love this so much. Oh my goodness because you can now take this pattern, which to me, when it gets, when it's bigger, I mean, yeah, you can do an overall cookie cutter shape and get all the different little squares and everything. But when you get it tiny like this, when you have tiny little strips, to me, it's a much more delicate pattern and you can do so much more with it. And when I bring in my other pattern, so when you bring in the last one, now look at the size. So the size here, we're like three quarters of an inch long on a piece. That is more like five eighths of an inch, working on a half of an inch. So it makes it for a much more delicate and a tinier and finer pattern that you're gonna be doing. Okay, so here I'm bringing in some more of my metallic paints that have been painted onto my unbaked clay, and I'm gonna cut each of these up into sections. And this time around, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you a half inch wide piece of the color, okay? And we're gonna lay that down, and we're gonna put that on a, a scrap piece of clay here like I have. And then I'm gonna bring in the same thing with all the other colors, about a half inch. It's gonna be a little bit wider in the regard that, well, not really wider. It's gonna be more of a rectangle piece, okay? Normally, Bargello, in my mind, is something where it's all a series of squares, right? And all of those squares are generally the same. In this case, what we're gonna be doing is the Bargello is going to be not a square, but a kind of long rectangle, okay? And the first piece that we do in this regard is gonna be where all the rectangles, the long rectangles are gonna be the same in, in length, okay? And then we're gonna do our Bargello that way. And then the second one is gonna be a mixture, a cornucopia, <laughs> if you will. And it's gonna be some long rectangles, some short ones, some square type, and they're gonna be all mixed in together and create a Bargello that way. So from here, I'm just gonna go ahead and let you guys watch my hands talk as I put these two different types of Bargello together.
So in creating all of this Bargello, I thought I have to make some jewelry. I mean, it's an imperative. <laughs> you have to do something fun with this. So I thought, let's go ahead and do that. We'll do the jewelry. I'm gonna bring in some of these diamond shape type cutters I have. And I got a whole smattering of them. It's all in one little packet I got from my local craft store. And I thought, okay, which size do I use? So the smallest size, I thought, let's go with that with the earrings. I don't like big, 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 huge earrings. And then I went with the second largest uh, diamond shape cutter for the pendant. And part of the reason was because I wanted to go ahead and make my background black. And yes, this clay was done on a number five setting on my Atlas pasta machine. But with my black background, I thought, you know what, even when I go to put in, I want to say, because I'm going to have to put an eye pin in, I'm going to have to back this so that I can make it hang and everything. So to do that, I got to come back in with a way to back it. And I didn't want it to be plain with just everything running off the edge. I wanted to have a little bit more of a frame. So that's why the larger um, diamond shape is going to come in really well for us. That's going to be our backing, but it's also going to be where I can go ahead and I can make that a different color too. I didn't want it to be black. I wanted it to be something else. Anyway, I brought in some of this Bargello, or I should say some one of my other pieces that I did with the Bargello, and this is the tiny stuff, right? <laughs> it's like five pieces. I had done it in the really thin strips, the one eighth of an inch, and part of this is because it works so much better into a pendant piece anyways. You get some of that larger stuff and I'm like, ah, oh, no. <laughs> I want some little tiny detail, you know, because to me, here's just, here's just a thought, okay? Or just the artist kind of thought on things here. I love detail. And when it comes to detail, I think it usually always wins the day. Just in my mind, it just wins the day because people are more interested in seeing what the details are. They want to know what's going on there when you have a ton of detail. The eye gets more trapped into going over the detail than just pushing it aside when it's just one giant dot. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not big on modern art. <laughs> But anyway, right here, um, I'm taking that Bargello once again, and I'm just going to place this, this time right over that bottom, the bottom of this pendant. I wanted to have it where it would go over entirely, but I wouldn't be cutting off a ton because we're going to have to recut this diamond piece. And when we recut it, I'm going to bring in a piece of plastic wrap. So this way, then we get a little bit of a domed effect too. Now there is one more thing I do want to mention there when it came to the, the whole thing with the detail bit. Part of this is also scope, or I should say size, okay? If you have a huge project, something that's really large, okay, you can go, like the, the larger Bargello would look great probably on a larger piece, okay? And I'm not talking jewelry here, I'm talking like a larger decor piece, something that would sit out <laughs> more. Um, but when you get tiny like this in the jewelry, I like to tend towards more of a small detailed type look. Okay, now that I've recut that um, diamond piece, we're gonna take one of the pieces that I had left over and we're gonna place it right over the top. This is what's so nice about that Bargello. You can take part of it and cut off, you know, or actually put the piece down, cut it, and then take pieces that are left over and place them right over areas that you're like, yeah, that would look really good here or whatever. You don't have to reform or remake another piece of Bargello. You can already use what you've got going on for you. All right, so here we're bringing in that smaller cutter and we're gonna, re we're gonna create our earrings. And when I bring in the Bargello, I've decided I'm just gonna go ahead and use like, there's only a small amount here, right? So how many pieces am I gonna get? If I can get one up and one down, like where there's like three pieces, that's awesome. That way then I, I know I've got something I can work with. However, if I can get more, I'm gonna try and get more. So I've got three each for both sides. That works, great. Let's see how many more I can get. There's one on one side, 
one on the other on the other side now let's see if we could get just two more two more pieces come on yes <laughs> it works yay <laughs> so i'm going to go ahead and put one on one side and one on the other and detail them up All right, so my little surprise element in here is going to be a purple leaf cane that I had um, developed, I want to say, quite a while ago. Anyway, I thought I'd go ahead and use this as kind of a nice little detail to add into my Bargello here on my earrings and my pendant set. All right, now that I've got my earrings and my pendants kind of decorated up the way I like them, I'm bringing in some of my gray. Um, actually, this is my metallic silver um, polymer clay, and I'm gonna go ahead and back each of these pieces onto the silver. I told you I didn't want black, I wanted something else. So I'm gonna bring in my eye pins, I'll make my little loop, or I should say my little hook, and then we'll go ahead and place that onto the clay along with some liquid Sculpey that I'll go ahead and use that to kind of fuse both clay pieces together. And when I do this, I'm going to take the larger cutter and I'm going to cut the larger piece on the silver, on the silver clay here. Now, when I did it, I put down the liquid Sculpey like I'm doing right here. I probably could have waited on it just go ahead and cut the silver piece first, but I wasn't really thinking. I was like, okay, just put it down and then, you know. <laughs> so, you know, just as an FYI, don't do what I do here. <laughs> cut your silver clay first with your larger cutter. Then, then put your little eye pin down and then put your other piece with the liquid Sculpey on top of that. Yay! <laughs> I got it. <laughs> Once you have that, then it's all good to go. I still was able to manage it to do it the way I did it right here. So no worries. It worked out just fine. And when I went to go to the earrings, I actually did it right. <laughs> so I did learn from my mistake. Yay. <laughs> but from here, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys watch my hands talk as I put together the rest of this jewelry set.
Okay, so here I just wanted to show you kind of the results of what we had done earlier. I had done that long strip or that long section of Bargello, which was about three inches long. So there's a lot there that I could play with if I really wanted to. And then I also had then the square one on top, which really could turn into a really nice border if I needed it. And then on the one on the bottom where it's cut off on the one side, but you have the jaggedly, jagged little Bargello going on on the bottom, that almost, if I was to take that out more, I could see that becoming more of a trim even. And then of course the middle one, which is the smallest of all of them, that's of course my favorite. I love that kind of a thing. You've got that jagged, wonderful little Bargello going back and forth, and you're only dealing with five, you know, really five strips there. So it's not really cumbersome to work with. Here I have the results from showing the size, and I thought this was so important to kind of show you guys. It's kind of what the focus of this particular video was all about. I wanted to show the different sizes and how it can really correlate as to, oh, how big it can get or how small it can get. And of course, the top one is my tiny, tiny Bargello, which I absolutely love. Then I have my middle section, which it, it's not much bigger than the tiny, but it's big enough that you can really tell a difference when it comes to applying it to any kind of project you're doing. And then you have the two pieces on the very right and on the very bottom. And mind you, these are like skinny rectangles that I was working with, but if you expand out that rec rectangle into more of a square, you could see how this thing would get big. <laughs> and you'd be having to put down a whole lot more clay as well. But this was really fun because it gave me ideas for, you know, that skinny rectangle kind of look is really beautiful. And I could see some really awesome looking, I mean, mind you, it would really be big jewelry, but you could also use this on maybe some type of larger decor project, and then I really think it would shine. And here now we have the very end results of doing everything in this particular video. Please use all of this for study and reference. And if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and leave me a comment. I'm always wondering what you're thinking. Otherwise, I am sending out my biggest hugs to each of you, and I hope you have a fantastic day.